Welcome again to Forever Love, um, after all. Uh, we know we used to be called How Love Can Last Forever After All, and 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 we've done a good job of that, but I got me a new family now, Forever Love people. And uh, today I've got a couple of uh, folks here that you guys are going to love. Um, th th <laughs> listen, I, I just can't wait for you guys to see their energy and to hear their stories. Um, but but I, enough of me. You guys go ahead and introduce yourselves. Introduce yourselves. We are Rick and Sue Hubler. Hey. We've lived in Bernie, Texas for the last 17 years. Yeah. We they, go to they first got a little, They got a little house. They got a little a little something that they, that they live in. Just a little place. We've been saving our pennies for a long, long we time. We have a little place out in the in the six and a half acres out in the country in a in a gated community. We love it. God has blessed us richly. Um, and so yeah, we've been at First Baptist Church for about 14 years and God led us to a marriage ministry there and has blessed that amazingly led us to amazing connections. Yeah. A couple more fun facts about that. So we have been married over 40 years, long time. I was a child bride. I was a child bride, yes. uh, but we both served in the United States army Ooh. and that is how we Ooh. met uh, as my sweetie said, we are blessed to lead a marriage ministry. And we will tell you, after Ishi right here, this guy, uh, first in my life is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as it is with my man. And then after that, it is my guy and how we can share the light and love of Jesus Christ. And that is how God led us in this amazing tapestry to meet. Pastor Cal. Yeah. And yeah. Now, yeah. Come together to uh, just talk about the importance of Jesus Christ in your life and, and his design for marriage. Right. That's We're right. Here. We're and, passionate and, and, about marriage. And you and I get it. You know, you you guys got 40 years. I got 35. We're trying to catch you. We're <laughs> not keep, keep running away from us, but we're trying to catch you. And, and like you, uh, my, my wife was a very child bride. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, uh, I love her. True, true story. True story. We had when we first moved here, we're moving in, and and I'm getting to meet the neighbors, and and the neighbor comes up to me, and goes, "You have two beautiful daughters," and I go, "Oh man!" I go, "Oh no, 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 no! One of those is my wife." And then I went into the to the to the to the house, and I thought, "Wait, does he think that I have like a teenage bride or something?" You know, my little brain was just going crazy, kind of thing. But but uh, you know. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with her as best I can. I really am uh, uh, trying to keep I up. I know with the feeling, brother. But but like you, she is the love of my life uh, 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 behind Jesus Christ kind of thing. But but what, what I love about, about the podcast and what we're trying to do is we're trying to show people how cool the word is. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of this imagery of, of, of whatever label you want to put on it. But I know, and I got a chance to meet Sue and Rick, and, and we know how life-giving the word is. And so oh, um, we, 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 you know, just like Jesus was the word made flesh, we're, we're trying to take our relationships and show you how the word has infiltrated our relationships and in our lives uh, kind of thing. Um, and so it's been real cool. So now first question I have for you, I know you met in the military, but I want to hear about your salvation experience. I want to hear about when you met the Lord. So yeah. you go first. T tell me about your salvation experience. Sure. Happy to. So uh, as God would have it, uh, I was raised initially to attend church. My parents insisted I have a religious education. So I, uh, in my early years, went to uh, different churches, a Presbyterian church, a Methodist church, 
I was baptized through the Presbyterian Church uh, outside of St. Louis, Missouri, when I was eight years old. But after that, my parents quit going to church. And when that happened, so did I. So I would say I had the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but I did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so um, as years would go on, various friends would invite me to various denominations, to various churches, and I would attend uh, music is a passion. Praising Jesus Christ is one of my joys in life. And so I was always a part of a choir and a praise team, and I would attend church camp and things like that. But it wasn't until I was in college, I attended a college in San Antonio, Texas, and uh, I was one of the oldest child, one of these kids who did Uber everything right. Uh, rebelling was staying out a half hour late. I mean, I just, you know, I just never did anything wrong. Wild child. I understand. Wild yeah, child. one of those. Wild yeah. child. But in college, I started questioning. I started asking, am I doing this because people expect this of me or am I doing this for myself? And I, I will tell you, I entered, entered a dark period. And what I mean by that is... I started uh, hating myself, hating myself. I hated how I looked. I hated what I was doing. I hated that I just didn't feel I had any identity, felt horribly alone. And then my junior year, I started skipping class and just not doing mm, the, rebel. yeah, rebel where I used to get A's and used to never miss. I was skipping class, felt horribly alone. And I was studying because there were finals and uh, I was way behind and I just felt horrible. I was uh, a bulimic. I just was horrible. No drugs, but hated myself. And uh, I was studying, panicking, feeling alone and totally unworthy. And my God spoke to me outside. And my God said, you are not alone, that you can come to me as you are, just as you are. And so I picked myself up. My God said, go sing to me. I went to chapel and I've been singing ever since. My, 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 no, It's my. been a great journey. And oh, as God would have it, after I started doing that, that's when it's like, you need a swift kick. If you continue with what you're doing, you're going to just focus on you and not on me. And so that swift kick was me foregoing my plans to go to law school and Ugh. following his plans by joining the army. Who knew? Who knew that it was like, okay, I'll join the army, get a swift kick, figure out what I want, and then pursue my dreams. And as God would have it, entered the army and this guy was sitting behind me in class and we saw each other in chapel and uh, the rest is God's design and not our plans. Amen. Well, li listen, listen, my head is about to explode. <laughs> for, 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 first, first of all, first of all, where were you when you got baptized? I was in Missouri. I was eight years now, see, old. Let, let, me, let me stop you right there. Let me stop lying. She yeah. wasn't in Missouri. Missouri. <laughs> she was in Missouri. Southern. Yeah. Southern yeah. part of the state. I, I was like, okay. I didn't know. Where did, okay. I, okay. I, I knew I, I thought I heard that. Okay. Uh, but then to hear you tell how the enemy attacked you to make you feel alone. And, and I know all of us have the same scripture screaming in our ears right now. Not good for us to be alone. Yes. Amen. You know, but, but just like Man, a first child, just, 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 just like a first child, just like a first child, God got to speak to her directly. She couldn't nobody come talk to her about it. It was God directly. I, I love it. I love it. Now, now when you heard that, did you know that it was God or, or did it feel I did actually the uh, because uh, I heard my own flesh for so many years uh, that 
it had to be God because it was a uh, totally different message. A totally different message, as my sweetie said. And uh, there was a warmth. I, that's how I describe it a warmth and a sense of hope, you know, for I am with you always. Yea, I mean, even unto the end, right? That I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come to me as you are, and I will give you rest. So, and, so here's my question. Here's my question, though. Yeah. Because all of those scriptures are running through my head, but my question is, is in your junior year, did you know all those scriptures to know that it was God, or was it the feeling of hope and it was a different message than you have been telling yourself? You know, Cal, that's a great question. I will tell you, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I I am a, a personal believer and love of music because when you learn music as a child, especially through church, through a religious education, you're learning God's word, whether you know it or not. You're yes. learning God's verses. So I grew up, with a love of these childlike songs. And so I can tell you there was a part of me that absolutely had a childlike faith and knew God. And that's why I distinguish the difference between knowing God and recognizing, do you have a personal relationship with him uh, is where I make a distinction because I might know him, the devil knows him, right? The devil knows his word, but my personal relationship, calling him by name, knowing that he called me by name yeah. uh, and all the names I have for him, redeemer, comforter, savior, Lord, king, healer, friend. Uh, he is all things to me. So, and, and that's where I recognize there's life. And so, and so this is why I think that that clarity is so important because I, I, I still interact with a lot of college age and just out of college age kids. And, and oftentimes they'll have the question about when do I know that I hear the Lord? Mm -hmm. and, and I remind them that the Bible says that the Holy Spirit can only repeat what he's heard the father say. Yes. Amen. And so it's that if you, if you don't have, if you don't have a word in you, then you don't know that it's from God. Amen. Amen. But but like you, I can have a feeling. It can give me a sense of hope. It can change the messaging that I have been receiving. But but I always like to emphasize that that the way that you know that you know that you know is that it lines up with the Word of God. And and like you, I was a, I was a a, a a choir, praise and worship, a singing group kind of guy too. Um, and it was amazing how much of that word was in the song um, uh, uh, that that helped me to gain and strengthen my relationship with God. But one of the things that I just want to emphasize is that when I have to talk to people about, I heard the Lord, and and when I begin to ask them, okay, well, wh where where is that in the word? Like, what what is you know, you know, a um, uh, kind of thing. And so I I love I love the organic way that that the Lord gave His word to you through song. Um, yeah. But once again, would you say, correct me if I'm wrong, would you say that that's something you understood as you looked back? Oh, but yes. Not, but not necessarily in the moment? Oh, yes. And yeah. as I look back, certainly you start learning yeah. until it becomes personal that there is no coincidence, yeah. right, with God. And so the importance of uh, getting into his word. Yeah. So after that, I started attending my first Bible study. Yeah. God placed Christians in my path, yeah. uh, giving all glory to him where I look back and didn't realize it at the time, but I saw his hand. Yeah. And then as you read God's word and it becomes personal to you, you start recognizing that uh, if he said this before and it's true, then why would he change? And he is never inconsistent and his word is always true and he's always constant. He's so if he is faithful and here with me back then in that moment, 
there's no way he's not here with me now. And right. That's what you learn. Right. And, and going back to your comment really quickly on youth, the other thing I recognized is my God is a powerful God and he can put his big God pants on. And if youth wish to question, question, he's, he's, open to it seek, but let's seek be, me. yeah seek ye first the kingdom of god but let's do it in a way that is god honoring so let's test the scriptures let's follow the bereans let's read his word and talk about it and see uh, he how he affirms that every day yeah listen i i, I love it i love it i love it in term in terms of you, you, you know when you talk to people who have experienced testing the word that, that's the only way a person can say the kind of things that you just say you 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 have to have tested it uh, uh kind of thing and once again like you i agree go ahead go ahead test him <laughs> he ain't scared of you you know and i and i'll flip to the other side and then rick i want to hear your story i'll flip to the other side I, you know you, have you ever met anybody that hasn't come from a dysfunctional family? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I'm not alone. Yeah, it's rare. It's rare. So, so, yeah. so I started. I started getting. I got it. You know, I got. I started getting introduced to this understanding of a dysfunctional family, and there was this one particular book that I read, and I had to throw it against the wall at least five times because. <laughs> Because it was telling stories, and I was thinking, "How did you get in my house? Like, how did you like? Yeah. Like, it yeah. felt like it literally yeah. felt like it was verbatim. It felt like it was verbatim, right? And so, and so, at, at first, I was like, "What is going on here? That you have this in a book?" And then I, I remember the Lord said, "Yeah, if it's in the book, then that means it's not new under the sun." All right, good point. And, and and it also means that you're not alone in what you're experiencing. And and it also means that I have the answer for you. Yes. So so then immediately I didn't feel alone anymore. I didn't feel like there was something wrong with me and something wrong with my family. It was like, oh, that's the attack of the enemy. Oh, so let me get to this. Oh, so if you can write it in experiences, then there must be some and I and all of a sudden, my dependency on the word of God just just went through the roof amen because once again i was searching for answers and i went to this secular book that is a christian writer but would speak from the perspective of of our our earthly experiences yeah and so you know the other scripture that comes to my mind is to be wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove amen. so i was gaining wisdom and understanding what i was seeing in 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 our world but then I had to learn how to become harmless as a dove. I had to learn, okay, what is the wisdom of God that helps me deal with? And I was like, oh, and so it was, it was just so exciting for me to, to, to have that experience. But once again, it, it was challenging God at his word. It, yes. it was, it was learning how to depend on him. And, and like you, as I looked back in my life, I realized, oh, I was depending on the word there. I didn't even know it. Oh, I was working that scripture. I didn't even know it. And, yeah. and so part of what the podcast is designed to do is to try to help, you know, you know the old saying, if I only knew then what yeah. I know now. Oh, sure. oh well, we well, hear we're trying we're trying to get that we're trying to get our then to their now. Yes. Right? We're right. trying to help them understand. Listen, preach it, preach it. We got the cheat code. We got the cheat code. Okay, so Rick, tell me your salvation experience. Okay, so I did not grow up in a Christian home. Um, my dad, master, retired master sergeant, so I grew up under Master Sergeant Hugler, right? There were three boys and uh, a, a sister. My, she's the oldest. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me jump in just real quick. Not, not, not dad, it was Master Sergeant. Yes, yes, or sir. So, do, I right? remember, was, do I imagine you walking in? And, 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 he, he was a hard man. Very so demanding. if we went to someone's house and they ask us if we wanted a soda or pop back then, um, you want some pop, you would see four heads look at dad. And if dad went like that, we said, yes, please. And if dad did this, we said, no, thank you. I mean, that's, well, you know. Wait a second. My mama, my mama wasn't in the military. And my mama <laughs> told me, she said, you better not, you better not ask for nothing. <laughs> 
house. Well, I, thought that, well, I, I thought that was just in my house. I thought that no. was just in my house. No. Remember that book you read? <laughs> no, we we grew up under Master Sergeant Hudson. He was a hard man. Okay. And and there was a lot of I learned early on um the key to um winning a fight was he who yells the loudest wins. Wow or he who gets the angriest wins. So there, there was a lot. I mean, we, it, it, it's, it's kind of a uh, contradiction. We were a tight-knit family, and yet there was lots of yelling, lots of fighting, taking sides, no good conflict resolution at all. That, that's the skill set I brought into our marriage was uh, he who yells the loudest wins. And the number one principle, what goes on in this house Stays. Stays in this house. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. You read the book, too. I see you read the yeah. book, too. Okay. Same book. <laughs> so, again, not a Christian home. My oldest brother, Ron, was the first to uh, be saved. He went to a local church nearby, about a mile from our home, Camp Hill Missionary Alliance, CMA Church. Great discipleship there. Uh, great teaching. And so he set about to... to you know, lead all of us to salvation. So, and I, I, my big brother was my role model. He was the guy that I looked to for, you know, guidance. He actually married us. He actually wed us. Yeah. He became a chaplain in the army and he was our, he, we were his first wedding. Test case. Yeah. And so he can say, yeah, the first people I married still were going solid. So, um, so I started going to Camp Hill Missionary Alliance and made lots of good friends there. Um, but it wasn't until um, a missionary week. It was in August of 72, I believe, when a missionary from Irian Jaya, go ahead and figure where that is. A missionary from Irian Jaya came and it was a Wednesday night. I'm sitting with my big brother, fourth pew back on the left from, from the you know, from the pulpit. And it was like, he was, he was delivering the gospel message so clearly and so powerfully. And as far as I was concerned, God was speaking directly to me. And I just, I just, tears started just flowing down my cheeks. And uh, my brother said, you you want to receive Jesus Christ as your savior? And I said, yes, I do. I believe. And, uh, and so he led me in a sinner's prayer uh, and I want to say that it was skyrocketing from there, but you know, I, I'm not in a home of great discipleship. Um, I had a good church, but then I go off to college, um, and that was not um, a wholesome. I join a fraternity, and I can. I, I want to tell parents now: if you have a son joining a fraternity, a Greek Greek yeah. fraternity, or a daughter joining a Greek sorority there's probably not a lot of God honoring activity that's going to take place there. And so that was my life in college. And then I go off to the military, um, much like my older brother, he got an ROTC scholarship, goes, you know, goes to uh, college on a four year scholarship and then joins the army. That's what I did. And that's when I met this amazing woman, not, not out of co- coincidence, but God's divine plan. And the rest is Hugler history. Hugler history. Now, what I, once again, what, what I love is how both of your stories distinguish between religious experiences and relational experiences. Yes. Now, now I think both of them are, are needed, right? Yes. I, I, you know, I, the, the religious experience is about a community. Yes. trying to represent Christ, that's needed. I, yes. you know, I don't want people to think that I'm trying, but but ultimately we've got to get to this place where we have a relational experience. Yeah, Here, here's why that's important. Because when I accepted Jesus Christ and shared that with my friends at church, everyone to the person said, oh, we thought you were saved, right? Because it was a religious environment. And so you... You must, you must be saved. And, and, and so that just highlighted to me, we can never assume someone is a Christ follower. We need to hear their testimony. We yes. need to share testimonies all the time. And, and, I, and Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and I think where that also leads, uh, 
Cal, and, and geez Louise, man, I'm in my 60s and I'm still learning this. So I never want to pretend that we have all the answers. But when you talk about uh, a relationship, uh, I've been going on a 60 plus year journey of where and who is my identity in. And so that idea of relationship is recognizing my purpose, my identity, where I find joy and how is my joy complete, where I feel valued. And that goes back to this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so to have that knowledge uh, and that awareness and education combined with heart, uh, to make it personal is where you find your purpose, hope, faith, uh, direction. joy, and direction, certainly. Thank mm-hmm. you. Okay, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little fast forward, and then I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Okay. I'm do a little fast forward, and then I'm going to rewind this a little bit. Um, Calvin the Puppet Master. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you guys are setting me up perfectly here. I'm just so excited. So, so on the day you got married, as you talk about purpose, what did you think the purpose for marriage was? Ooh. We we were young and foolish and dumb, like most couples. We got married at age 24. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we knew that God designed marriage, but we, we, and, and my brother, who is a great man of God talked about covenant marriage and, and all that, right. Uh, It's not a contract, boy, you know, but you're, you're, you know, the hormones are going and you're, you're just like, that's what I'm talking about, Rick. (laughs) And I mean, that's that's everything goes right by you, you know, and you do all of that stuff. You buy into the the culture, you know, hook, line, and sinker that, you know, this woman, she she is the one for me, right? I'm not, she is I'm not. the one. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> this is Cinderella, right? And I'm hey. her knight in shining armor. That is a true story. And we will live happily ever after. I mean, you just come into marriage with amazing, unfounded expectations. We, we, uh, Cal, we laugh about it now. Again, 40 years looking back. We remember that day to my sweetie's credit. The good news is we were married before God. Yes. And even in our lack of, uh, our journey at the time. Yeah. We uh, were very we knew immature. That Christians. We wanted God in our marriage, yeah. but to his point, that was a self that was a product of salvation which is all important but when we talk about our journey and personal relationships and sanctification uh, it certainly it was wasn't not there it wasn't until 15 years into our marriage oh, that god really got a hold of us and he became the first right. priority Right. See, see, I I knew y'all would knock it out the park. I knew y'all would knock it out the park <laughs> be, be, because because I'm just like you guys when we got married and knew all that stuff. But all I want to know is is when is our plane leaving for Cancun and when are you coming <laughs> to Cancun? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all. Yes. I want. So once again, if we had to capsulize what we thought the purpose of marriage is, I'll tell you what I thought mine was, so I could have legal guilt free sex. Yes. Oh, yeah. And my happiness. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Right? Me, 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 me. <laughs> right. Yes. And, 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 and so, and so, but once again, I was operating in principles that I learned when I was 14, but I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. So even though we got married at 24, like you guys, and, and when you put that bikini on and, 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 all, and even though, you know, my needs aren't getting mad and I'm d- disappointed. Her needs aren't getting mad and she's disappointed. We were working in a principle, which I believe is the purpose for marriage that we didn't know. Yes. So, so I'm trying, so I'm trying to make what I believe the purpose of marriage is a knowing place so that on the day people get married in 2024, they're not just looking to go to Cancun and, and put on a bikini, but they also know they're going to spend the rest of their life walking in this purpose. Yes. Because you can have both. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Now, 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 now this is where I'm going to take a little risk. 35 uh-huh. years, 40 years later, do you still got both? Do you, do you still got? Do you still Absolutely. got? Oh, yeah. Yes. See, as, as, as I remember, as I remember Rick talking about where the magic happens, it, you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, that, we'll say that for another podcast. <laughs> that was so, during the house tour, I think. <laughs> I, I know it was. And you were in a particular room talking about magic. Um, uh, and it wasn't the kitchen. Um, uh, but anyways. Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> On the floor, you hot wench. On the floor. <laughs> But, but I think this is the thing that's so important because I believe that the purpose of marriage is to heal your heart. Okay. So Sue, as you talk about your journey of, of, of self-awareness and, and your personal purpose, I think if we understand the purpose of the institution of marriage, that's what helps to facilitate us getting healed so that we walk in the purpose that God has designed for us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, Kat, I agree with you. Let me, let me in my own words, say it back to you just a slightly different way. Uh, wait, wait, is that, is that, is that heart to heart training? I love it. Let's <laughs> oh, bring, yeah. it. bring it girl. I love it. I love it. I You're love so it. Bad. She's the reason. <laughs> yeah, so, cause we all have our own voice, right. As God designed us. And, and so, uh, to have on this earth the closest physical intimate relationship that I can have with my husband that brings me the closest I will ever be to my God until we go home again. That's your message of healing. So as God designed marriage to have this unity with this guy and with my God, it brings healing. It brings this identity. identity. It brings, I talked about my journey of darkness and not liking me. Now I still struggle. I hate having my pictures taken, things like that. But knowing that my God sees me as a beautiful, loving, unique creature that he loves. And design. And I see that this guy uh, takes me as I am, right? Forgives me, grants me grace, lifts me up. Y'all, all I can say is we have so much fun. Yes, there are struggles. And candidly, I don't know how you do it without Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right. Marriage is hard. Marriage is work, but there ain't nothing better after God. Right. There's but, just nothing better. And marriage is God's crucible. Oh, yeah. Right. It, it's God's crucible. He He puts us, us two in this crucible, turns up the heat. Right. And just like a metallurgist, that that is to refine us. Right. Marriage refines us and makes us helps us become the people that God wants us to be in our marriage. Isn't that cool? That's good stuff. And there is spice. Yeah, go ahead. Somehow I don't I don't want this to get lost. I don't I don't want this to get lost. So you just got finished saying that the man sitting next to you on a horizontal love you tells you how beautiful you are. So that helps you understand how beautiful God sees you. But wait a second. Isn't this the guy that was born up by, by Sergeant Major, sir? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it wait, gets wait a second. Wait a second. So and so and so think about what the Lord has done for Rick that he didn't become his dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, because, you know, they say more is caught than taught. Yes. Amen. And, Absolutely. And, 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 and so. Like you said earlier, Rick, you came into this marriage. A lot of baggage. Oh, uh, didn't we both? Okay. So, right. So so now, so I wanna I wanna throw a scripture in here. The Bible says, Husband, love your wives like Christ loved the church. First time I read that, the first thing out of my mouth was, I can't do that. Yeah. I can't I can't love her like you love no. me. Yeah. I can't I can't do that. And I remember hearing the Lord go, keep reading, keep reading. Okay, husband, love your wives like Christ loved the church washing them with the water of the word to remove our wrinkles, stains, and blemishes to present them back to yourself. What? Like, what? They come back? Wait, wait. They they come back without wrinkles, without stains? Without... They, 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 they come back? 
Once again, I can't do that. He said, but wait a second. You you do know that you're the bride and the groom. As I, I said, I went back to my old 80s sitcom. What you what you talking about, Lord? What you... <laughs> he said, he said, you're the groom to your wife, but aren't you the bride of the church? Yes. I was like, oh, yeah, I am. He said, so the same washing that I'm asking you to do needs to be done to you. And I was like, oh, it's a profound I, get it. I get it. I get it. And so and so now, Rick, I want to I want to hear you talk about how did you become a man that could make that kind of deposit coming from where you came from? Yeah, that's a great question. And and I didn't do it well initially in our marriage. I guarantee you that because, um, again, we we go into marriage with all these hopes and dreams and false expectations. And my wife's going to meet all my needs. And, um, and it took us a while. And, and I, you know, I was blessed with this amazing woman. I'll give you one small example where she encouraged me to be the spiritual leader of the home. And that was when we would go to some small group or something, and they would ask me to pray. I hated to pray in public. I hated it. I was so self-conscious about it now. And Sue was good at it. And so she could have easily said, honey, you're embarrassing us. Let me do it. Right. And, and I would have in all likelihood at that time deferred and said, okay, yeah, phew, you take, you do it. Right. And she said, no, no, just pray what God lays on your heart. You don't have to worry about the these and the thous and anything. Just pray what's on your heart. Right. That's all God asks of us. And that encouragement helped me, right? And so that's, I just offer that up to young couples, you know, especially wives, you encourage your husband. He will, he will respond if you encourage him, right? He will take that leadership. And then so that, that was one of the ways that Sue helped me become the spiritual leader of the home. But I, I, again, you know, it, it was 15 years into our marriage before God really got a hold of us. We went to a small uh, Bible College in Bowie, Maryland, and there was Bible Church. Bible Church, not Bible College. Thank you. Bible Church in Bowie, Maryland, and I'm telling you, great discipleship, fantastic discipleship, great growth. Small groups were huge there. With home groups, small home groups were, group. and that's where we started a meteoric ascent to putting God first in our marriage and in our lives, and then. You know, we come here and, and God puts us in a marriage ministry that we never thought we would be in. And that grows us amazingly. So it, it's just fun to look back and see God's hand upon us and the spiritual markers that he puts in our lives all along the way. And we can look back and go, man, he was faithful. He was faithful. He was faithful. Right? Yeah. And we responded to those faithful calls. And so that was pretty neat. Yeah. Well, and and you you talk about the refining how, how marriage is a refining place, um, and I like to say this according to the scripture that we just got finished quoting, is that what he refines is he burns off the impurities, he burns off the wounded places, exactly, he burns off the broken, he burns off the traumatic places, he burns off the bulimia, he burns off the 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 forest of it, he burns all of that stuff off, not me. Yes. Right. And so and so for me. Perfect. Perfect. When I'm when you know, and I always I've asked people, do you like how you feel when you get fresh and clean? Now I used to ask it this way. I, I used to ask, do you like taking a shower? And 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 it was amazing to me. The first three people I asked were like, nah, I still don't like taking showers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I guess I can't use that, but 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I said, okay, so let me ask you this. You might not like taking a shower, but do you, you like the results? Fresh and clean. Yeah. And so I said, I said, so so imagine if you understood that this process of developing yourself is about getting fresh and clean. You might not like the process of taking the shower. But the outcome. But, but if you get fresh and clean enough, you'll start to look forward to that, to those showers kind of thing. See, I was about 15. I, I said, oh, yeah, I got I need to go take a shower. I fell in love with showers. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I fell in love with showers <laughs> uh, 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 kind of thing. But but the thing that I that I that I love about it is is if I if I understand the word properly, it is it is about removing my wrinkles, my stains and my blemishes. 
and I always say it like this when I talk to the kids. I say, you'll never find in the Bible where it says, love your neighbor. And it does not say, as you love yourself. Yes. Yeah. And what I love woven in, in all of your guys' stories is that is that as you are learning to love yourself, it better equips you and enables you to love each other. Amen. 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 Hey, so, I, uh, I do go need ahead, to go ahead. add something because this I know this will resonate with everybody as well. Uh, in my man's journey and the way you asked the question, uh, do you think I tried to fix him? Do you think I tried to work on him to make him the <laughs> husband I wanted him to be? Right. Well, listen, we need to be on a relay team because you know, right. hand you off. Right? And okay. so we you spend, think she tried to be the Holy Spirit in my had, life. We <laughs> spent a lot of time. If you would just fix this guy, right, everything would be fine. So I, for all the ladies out there, I, I will tell you, I am uh, incredibly stubborn, very independent, have my own opinion. Uh, very used to getting my way, very used to expressing my opinion and expecting him to agree with it. So when you bring two army people and uh, type A type A people, very opinionated, uh, certainly I started trying to fix him. And in our journey, uh, both of us, uh, as I read God's word, it's like, uh, Let's talk about this word submission. Ooh. Okay, because uh, uh -uh. <laughs> no, I, I, I might submit to you, Lord God, but right? No. In my walk, but but you're commanding me to submit to this guy. He doesn't deserve it. Uh -uh. No, can't see it happening. And so my bottom line message is uh, work on yourself with your relationship with Jesus Christ, yes. and as you work on yourself. Uh, God does amazing things and your person sees it. And even without words, uh, yes. they can be convicted and encouraged. And, uh, and it's just a beautiful design. And, you know, and so a lot of it was really God, you know, as I learned to say what this was really in your word and, and, and you really want this, right? And so I, I don't want to pretend that it's easy. I don't want to have people think that we don't struggle. But the beauty of this unity, this usness, this us, one and plus how one, powerful equals it is. Uh, like I said, it's the closest thing we have to when we're home again. Yeah. I love God's word. And again, Calvin, you want to talk about God's word. Genesis 2, 24, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and cleave or cling to his wife and the, and the two will become one flesh, right? God's divine mathematics. One plus one equals one, right? And God puts that right up front. Adam and Eve don't even have parents, right? And, and yet that's what that God makes that statement in Genesis 2, 24. And then he has this marriage theme throughout the Bible from the Old Testament into the New Testament. And in, and in Revelation 19 is the wedding feast of the lamb. You know, it, it's just amazing how he weaves marriage into the entire Bible. He talks about his relationship to the Israelites as his as their husband. And I mean, it's it's exciting it's awesome. to see. And if, if we get this right here on Earth, if we get this horizontal relationship right, the way God intends it as a covenant relationship, it points us to what will someday be that Revelation 19 story. So it's exciting. And so that's Sue and I, our, our mission is we want people to look at us, our marriage especially, and go, that's different. What What's different about that? What? How do we get that? And so we just want to be infectious, not in a yeah. creepy COVID way, but we just want to be infectious when we're around other couples. You know, this, yeah. this doesn't have to be so hard. This can be really yeah. fun. And that's the beauty of this podcast, right? As we come together with you and how God brought us together and our backgrounds may be different. God may have led us on different journeys, but when we can come together like this amen. and say yes and amen yes, and how we are as brothers and sisters in Christ, I mean, it's like, it's infectious. How yes. could you not 
So now watch this. This is what I love. This is what I love. You talk about how we came from different places and we got all these different stories, but have you noticed how we've been able to finish each other's sentences? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that cool? So, so even though we're coming from these different places and we have all these different experiences that we think are unique to us, it's the same old scheme from the enemy. It is. So let me see if I can reframe an understanding of submission. Ooh. Oh yeah. Based on this new purpose. He's a, he's of, a brave, of, he's brave, he's brave man. man. Yeah. Based on this new understanding of the purpose of marriage, right? So if the purpose of marriage is to heal my heart, right? Then could it be that we're purposed to submit to understanding each other's heart so that when we butt heads and when we're being refined, what's being exposed are our wounded places and in our wounded places is causing us to act in ungodly ways. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Well perfect, said. Kevin. Right? Well said. So yes. so then so then when Major Daddy shows up, right? Sue goes, Oh, that's from dad. Mm. Oh, okay. How do I what word can I how do I how do I heal? How do I, what so now I don't I don't see his aggression, I see his woundedness. Oh, perfect. Well said. You're perfect. absolutely right. That so, journey... now, so now submitting. Is 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 easy because I see it as God using me to partner with His Word to heal my yeah. partner. Amen. Yes, and and I would say again for those who are watching and listening, um, submission isn't always easy, especially when I first started my journey with my walk with Jesus Christ. Uh, because it does mean you deny self to pick up the cross and follow the Lord. But to your point, when I learned to see my husband's heart and that this man would do anything for me and the strength of character to say no to self and yes to Lord and to trust that this man, now that I know his heart, it's not directed at me it's probably directed at himself and how can i come alongside as his partner mm. to lift him up uh, as god intends i mean it's it's amazing you know that type of uh, love and strength there's it, it's just it gets better and better every mm. day and so and so rick when you talk about the that when, when people say, I want the that, I think the mission that we're on in, in this world of, of marriage ministry is we need to we need to better be able to clarify and identify what the that is. Like, because these young kids think, oh, well, you just got lucky. Oh, well, you just picked a good one. Well, you don't know what's out here that I'm dealing with. No, 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 no. As crazy as you think it was for you, if we told the real truth about our stuff at 24, it was crazy. Yeah. Back then. Yes. Right, right. But what happens is, is we'll forget. And so, so, so like you guys, man, we were married 30 years. We've been together since 1982. She's a love of my life. Everything was wonderful. We had a 30th wedding anniversary and my daughter gave us two gifts. She gave us a trip to Cabo so she can, my wow. wife can so she can put that bikini back on. Okay, okay, let me come back. And and, and but but the other thing she did was focus. Listen, listen, I'm focused. I look here. I say, oh, but anyways, um, but but the other thing she did is she 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 had her family and friends do a video congratulating us on the 30 years. Oh, I love that. Now that happened right at the beginning of a COVID. So we didn't get to do the trip until our 32nd wedding anniversary because oh. we were all stuck in the house. Yeah. But the other thing that happened in that two year window is I kept getting phone calls in Texas congratulating us on the 30 years. But then I had four different people from four different parts of the country basically ask the exact same question. And that is, how are you guys doing it? And 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 I was like, how are we doing what? And they said this, y'all don't just look like y'all married. Y'all look like y'all still like each other. How are you still doing that? Yeah. How's right? that work? So now watch this. This is where the then if I only knew then what I know now kind of kicked in as I was answering those four different people, their questions, I kept telling stories that were connected to scriptures. 
and I kept telling stories where where in our in our interaction we were we were getting through the interactions healing each other's heart once again this is 5 years ago i didn't i didn't know it like i'm explaining it to you now so so if you go back and you look at the episode where my wife and i interview each other she says this she said calvin i i i always wanted to stay married because i wanted to be pleasing to god wow yeah yes but but I don't know that I was considering your heart. Yeah. Then and I'm paraphrasing, but then she said, when I began to consider your heart, I low key stopped judging you. So when you would do something that I deemed as stupid or or you make a mistake and it got exposed, I used to think, okay, I'm gonna stay with this guy, but oh, he is dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> But then, but then when I started looking at it from the premise of what's going on in his heart that caused him to do whatever he did, now I begin to see it and see you differently. Yeah, absolutely. And so Amen. What would happen well if what That's would happen yeah. if couples today realized that their purpose for coming together is to help to partner with the Word of God so that the Word of God heals them? I always want to emphasize: we can't fix each other. You've already said it, Sue. We, I'm not talking Amen. dysfunction. I'm not talking. I'm not talking codependency. I'm not talking that stuff. What I'm talking about is how do I partner with the Word of God that never fails, and understand that my never. submission to my spouse is to heal their hearts based on the Word of God. How different would relationships be if we, if oh, we, yeah. if we at 24 understood that premise at the <sighs> age of 24? How different? And and once again, we we got wonderful right now, right? We, we got wonderful right now. But but yeah. how much impactful and powerful would it be if we knew that day one? Isn't that amazing? Go to Cancun, put the, put the, put put the put the put the put the bikini on, get, get all of that, do all of that. But but if I understood that along with my eros passion, I need to have an agape passion. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah. Agape takes agape takes time though. You know, it's just that it God yeah, develops. Does it, take time? does it take time because of lack of understanding of that's where we're trying to get to? I would it's, say it, it it's better over time. And it takes a level of maturity too. And so I guess it is all to about point, understanding. Yeah, if you but, had but, that but, understanding. But now, but now, but let me let me challenge you a little, Rick. Let me challenge you a little. If 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 I have a GPS system and I plug in the right address, do I need more maturity to get to my destination? Nope. If I'm mature, know the right address, but I don't have directions, does my maturity help me to get to the right? No. Nope. So once again, I think that the enemy, we've got to be careful that we don't try to communicate that there's there's something that we got to do to earn, I really do Good. think it's a matter of the understanding. Good. If I understand I'm coming together Good. not just to get my needs met, but yeah. I am coming together so that I get healed yeah. so that I can use the word to help heal you. It's it's completely different in, in our understanding then. Yeah. Yes. I agree Are with you? you. Let me, again, let me, let me add my own personal step with this uh, because Jesus talks about, if you love me, you will obey me and yeah. I will make my home with you and my father will make your home with you. So there are times when out of obedience, just like your wife, I'm going to stay married yeah. because he's a good willed man. And my God has laid on my heart that this is a covenant relationship. So I yeah. will stay married. Right. Yeah. And with that obedience, out of love of my God, that understanding leads to a sacrificial love. And that's the agape love my husband is talking about. And so we talk about there was life changing events around 15 years of marriage, which is true. And that has only grown as we look at 40 years. And so as we look, Lord willing, however long, we get to be together, it, it gets even better. 
right? It just gets better. Absolutely. And that's the encouragement and the hope we would wish to share yeah. with people and yeah. uh, their yeah. relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can, I mean, you can tell people the truth, yeah. right? I mean, you can give them the GPS coordinates and, and all, but there's an experiential part of that, that, that develops that understanding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, my brother gave us excellent premarital counseling. <laughs> but but again, you know, you're you're in that young and dumb hormonal phase of life, and you're like, yeah, okay, okay, next, next. <laughs> I, I get it. Listen, yeah, and I, and I get it. I've been in cars with people, and the GPS is telling them, and the dude says, "I got a faster way. I know a shortcut." I'm going. That's me. You, you do know that you do know there's a satellite up there and they don't just they don't just give you the routes but they they know when traffic you, you, you wow. but, hey, but I'm smarter than GPS I know better <laughs> right so 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 I definitely I definitely agree with that but I also want to say this and once again I want to expose the enemy because is marriage difficult yes yes are there trying times yes but but I also want to ask this question what in life doesn't have difficulties yeah right when when we when we think about matriculating through a university for a PhD program, right? Um, we know there's going to be struggles with that, yes. but we don't have any problems submitting to that process. You're right, right. Absolutely. You, you you guys have a beautiful home, and if you guys were to tell your story about your home, you made some sacrifices and you and you denied yourself some things, right? You submitted to a process to be able to financially handle that. Sure. You understand that, right? You don't begrudge that. You don't think, oh, that shouldn't be happening. Yeah. But why is it that the enemy is able to make us think that in relationship, we're not supposed to have those experiences? Yeah, I know. So true. And, and, and it's the enemy. And so yeah. if I understand that there, there's, this, this, this is supposed to happen, but if I understand that it's happening, watch this, to refine me. Yeah. I.e. to remove my wrinkles, to remove my stains, to remove my blemishes, right? Yeah. Then my whole perspective is different. Well, it's it just, changes yeah. your whole outlook. Calvin, it's, you talk a lot about the enemy, and I just want to hone in on that because yes. I don't think that's well understood or accepted in today's culture. Uh, you know, God's word says our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against power, powers of the of the spiritual world of the you know darkness uh satan right that's the bible says that's our struggle is that's with it. you know satan and his many many minions um and yet we make it this we make it a struggle against flesh and blood see rick you keep you keep you keep lobbing stuff to me man so so watch this. Part now. <laughs> so watch this so watch this we talked about genesis where 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 Two become one, right? And it ends in Genesis 2 by saying they were naked and had no shame. Yes. Right? Paradise. Naked had no shame. 3 1. 3 1. 3 1. Who shows up? And and what's the first word out of his mouth? Did, Did God, God say? Really say that? Did God say? And so, and so the scheme that the enemy has perpetually lived in is asking us to question the word of God. Yes. Now, here's the other thing. If you look at Eve's response, she added stuff that God never said. God never said you couldn't look at the tree. Right. Right, or right. And, 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 and so once again, uh, to, to exactly your point, this understanding that, that the enemy is always trying to get us as far away from the word as possible Yes. And to misconstrue it as much as possible. Amen. So, 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 so when Sue is going, no, no, no submission, right? <laughs> but, but, but was that definition of submission a worldly definition or was it a submission around? Yeah, it was totally. In the, in that's, the world. that's the decision. Right? So now, watch this. Satan's it was in the world, it. right? It was in the world. But if it was anything like your world, it was, I found that out in the church. Yeah. yeah. Be, be, because, because, we're, you know, as we as people were trying to um, organize in community religion, right? But we're an organism, 
right? We're ever growing, ever evolving. We don't always get it right. And, and so I think the thing that is so, so powerful is, is, is if we can help, and, and you say, you've said it three or four times already, Sue. Listen, I'm still on this journey. I'm still learning. I'm still getting better. God is still showing me. If we understand that that is a journey that we're going to be on for the rest of our lives, and if any part of our life is not lining up with what the word says we are, to me, I get excited because that tells me, oh, there's something else the Lord's trying to show me. Amen. Right? There's something. Oh, yeah. oh. It's, it's, it's like you're, you're getting a cut on your skin. You immediately know, okay, let me cover it up. And then you know eventually your scar is going to be yeah, and it's going to heal because the body will heal itself. But what, do we understand that in, in our relationships that when difficulties rise up, they are there to help heal us? Oh yeah, and it, 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 once again, it it takes it you know it takes experience and time to, to get it. Yes. But what happens if we were getting that message from day one? Yes, oh, that's the key. That's right? the key, right? And yeah. so you talk about obedience to God. What that really is is learning how to submit to God. So if I've learned how to submit to God, how much easier is it for me to learn how to submit in relationship, understanding that this that submission is going to heal my heart even more. Yeah. This this thing about submission too. Um, when we talk submission, we always talk about the woman submitting, and yet Ephesians five. We and we go to Ephesians five twenty two to thirty three. I think it is is the you know twenty one. Submit you yeah. one to another first. Yeah. Yeah, but we leave out twenty one. Twenty one is like the, the beginning of that very thing. You know that that whole passage, and it says submit to one another as we as unto as the Christ. Lord. Yeah, as, as unto the unto Lord. Lord. Yeah. And so, you know, this submission thing, we, we all have to learn to do that well right. and to do yeah. that biblically. Yeah. And then I, I, the other point, which just excites me, is we are bombarded today by the culture. We are bombarded by secular thinking. It creeps into every aspect of our living and it creeps into our marriages. And, and so our, our whole purpose of aim and Sammy and all these things is to counter that with all this rich biblically based material that tells truth that pours truth into people's lives and into their marriages to combat the enemy that's right. the other reason why we love your podcast yes. is because a, a part of our journey has been uh, a lot of people don't realize God designed marriage and they don't realize how much God has to say about marriage in his he word. So if if the world is bombarded by a worldview, how do we flood the market, so to speak, yes. with God's view, God's right? And that's truth. your podcast. And we that are truth. privileged that yes. you have invited us it to is. be a part it of it. It is a privilege. We are humbled and privileged. Yes. And it's so wonderful. The Bible says that he's married to the sinner. Yes. Amen. So yes, true. He's married. So we're married. We're married to sinners. Yes, I love it. But once again, in His purpose of being married to sinners is to wash them with the water of the Word. Amen. That's and that's what we tell people. It's like you know they accuse the church of being hypocritical. It's like yes, church that's is, why I go. Church is I need full, help. Full I'm a sinners. Yeah, the it's church just, is full but of sinners. Can we be transparent? To your point. Can we get to know the heart? Can we give the glory to our Lord yeah. Yeah. and and know that come as you are, right? Yeah. You don't have to hide or pretend. Yeah. Come as you are. Yeah. 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 Come, come just like you are. He, he can take everything that's going on for you. Uh, uh, kind of come to me. Ye, listen, all you who listen. are weary. Y'all going to fool around and we're going to have to have another episode because y'all, y'all, <laughs> y'all, this is just. This, this has been fun, good. Calvin. Yeah, it's been way great. too good. Your energy energizes us. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, listen. But, um, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, you, you know. You said we're finishing sentences because we we just we share a common a, a commonality, and that's our belief. Our total yes. belief in God's word and in Jesus Christ. And our passion for marriage. And our passion As for marriage. As he designed it. But, but, but also, I, want, I don't want, I, I want the, the listener to hear this. We also share that we, we have a self-understanding. Mm -hmm. like, 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 I know a lot of my wounded places. There's a lot I still don't know. Yeah. Oh, right? you're absolutely right. But, but I know my wounded places. Yes. Right? 
And so think about this. You, I, I meet people all the time that that they get connected by their wounds. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, they have these experiences and they can relate by their wounds. And, 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 but, but there's a difference between relating by your wounds, i.e. codependency and dysfunctional yes. behavior. Yes. And then I know my wounds and I know where to take my wounds to get healed. Yes. There, there, there's a huge Big. difference. And so, and so, and so it is so energizing to me to be able to talk with people who have relationship with God and, and are naked and have no shame. Um, and 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 the word is continuing to help and heal us and deliver us and set us free. Uh, listen, we could we could talk for days. We could, you know. And and I and I, this is other scripture, and I never forget the first time I read it. Jesus had had ascended. I mean, he he was he was he had risen rise, risen from the and he was having breakfast with the disciples in the seashore, right? And he did that whole Peter, do you love me thing, right? Yes. But then, there, but then there's a scripture that says that on that day, Jesus did more miracles than could be numerated. Isn't that amazing? Wait a second. It wasn't but 11 people there. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So you're he, right. He, it has to be about healing. Right? He, he did more miracles than we could count. And it wasn't but 11 people up in there. Wow. I hadn't thought of that. That's wow. I gotta go back and look at that. Yeah. I'm, and I remember reading, I'm going, wait, wait a second. Is he talking? No, he talked about just that day. It, Cause it literally says on that day. On that day. So, so, so for me, the comfort that I got from that scripture was it doesn't matter how broken I am. It doesn't matter how traumatized I am. Mm. The word of God has a healing for everything that I've been through. Amen. Right. That, that learned, has to include community and brotherhood, right? Yeah. It has to. Right. So can we, representing Jesus Christ, offer healing, light, and love? Right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you guys have any closing words? I, listen, I I'm because I, you know, I'm sensitive, but I I, I go on if y'all want to go on. But, but. <laughs> Just some um some books to uh obviously the Bible, we should be daily in God's word, but there's a book uh, that we've read and actually did in our growth group recently, Gospel Fluency by Jeff Vanderstelt. And it, and it just talks about, are we becoming a gospel fluent church? Are we becoming a gospel fluent community? And what that looks like, it's, it's the opposite of religion. It's, I love it. It's knowing God's word and it's permeating our thoughts and everything. When you become fluent in Spanish, you actually, your thoughts are, start, you start thinking in Spanish. When you become fluent in the gospel, you start thinking in gospel terms. And boy, that's where the church needs to be, where we're, we're just fluent in what God's word says. It just emanates out of us. His truth emanates out of us. And we don't, we don't think secularly first and then try to translate it into the gospel. We I love that, Rick. First, right? Oh, Rick, that I love that. A great book. I, I would just commend Rick, that to you, anybody. You're gonna have me. You're gonna have me coming to visit this group. I might. I'm coming. I'm gonna have to come visit Bernie Church. Y'all, y'all gonna have to. I love that. And our, our discipleship pastor was the one that brought that to our church. For the first week he was at our church, he he had ordered like I don't know. 500, 400 of these books and every oh family Lord. got a copy of it. And it wasn't until recently that I actually got it off my bookshelf and started yeah, yeah, reading yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I see why he commends this to us. So. Oh, wonderful. Okay, you got uh, another one? Uh, the other thing I would just leave with everybody, and, and Calvin, this is a credit to you because you talk about healing. A, a part of, of that journey is when we seek our Lord to reveal to us our hurts and our wounds. And then we give it to him for his glory. So it becomes a part of our story uh, to unite others, as you talked about in your last sharing of the story of our Lord with his disciples, is that's a part of the healing process. And uh, as we all are passionate about our Lord and marriage, uh, we are happy to share. Please feel free to share our contact information, 
Yes. Because every person's story is important and unique and uh, should be shared for his glory. And so we all have a story to and, share. And, and I want to tell your audience to, if, if well, you got a, a nationwide audience, but here in San Antonio, we have this rich resource called SAMI, San Antonio Marriage Initiative. And if you just go on www.sami.org, they have all kinds of resources. And that's what we're talking it's about. It's all Christian churches yes. in the community it's, sharing and leveraging each other. Flood the to community God's with Listen, I'm, I'm getting ready to put Carl on the, he's on the calendar next to get interviewed. Oh, yes. Perfect. I want to watch that. I want to watch that. Carl's yeah, next. Man. I love it. Listen, Sue, I love what you said because the scripture that comes to mind that says, In my weakness, he is my strength. Amen. Yes. yes. And, and then I can get back to, when to I'm Genesis. Weak, he is strong. Yes. Right, and, and I think you should put one of those hats that are on the wall. Apparently, well, listen, you're a man of hats. listen you, when you first met me, I had some hair on my head. <laughs> I got I got tired of fooling with it, man. I, listen, it hey, was always this great. So much, this is so much easier. I tell you, it hey, takes your face and your hair at the same time. I, I, I thought you was my brother, man. You could have told me when you first met me, dude. You could have told me how much easier it is. Well, Here's what my guy told me, right? It takes a good looking head to show it off. Don't Listen, say. I've made so all funny. these heads, but only so many were perfect. <laughs> the rest he covered with hair. <laughs> Listen, that's the, when I shaved it, that's the first thing everybody says, oh, you got a nice shaped head. I said, okay, I, 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 I keep it. I can keep it. Well, well, listen, listen, guys, I want to thank you guys so much. I, I, I think the Lord was blessed today. I think Amen. I think they see the word has become flesh. Amen. I Yes. Thank you, Calvin. And we I'm just you. so grateful. Yeah, I'm grateful for what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. You're stuck with us now, man. Yeah. Your family. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I told you. Listen, I've already seen my room. My, my wife. Yes. Is, we, you know where your quarters are. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You, get your wife out here. you got the visitor yeah, yeah. wing. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and we're gonna make that happen too. So. So yeah. But um, uh, I just, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by what the Lord will do. Um, in lives for years to come because of this. Amen. Like, like I still get, I still get inboxed and texts from my first season's episodes. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Like I, I still get, I still get messages talking. And, and so I didn't even realize it when I first started it because of the pandemic is, you know, we couldn't, and, and I began to realize, oh my God, like, 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 you know, not not, but I have I have I've been all over the country, ministering and perform weddings after doing coachings of couples, uh, uh, kind of thing, um, um, and and is tremendously humbling. But but I am on fire for what God is 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 calling for me to do, and um, Amen. um I am grateful that that the Lord has caused our paths to cross. Yes, and uh, and, and you think that I'm trying to get rid of you, you ain't going to get rid of me. Girl, I, don't know what <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Kool-Aid you've been drinking. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Listen, 